Okay, let's begin. Our first speaker this evening is Laura Canal. She is the founder of Miles of Smiles Alternate, Alternative Solutions, which is located in the Spiritual Spa on Queen Street and here in Niagara Falls. Educated in the medical field and pursued a career in the hospitality industry for 30 years, the new millennium opened up to a whole new career path in which she is a reflexologist, Reiki master, sound and crystal healer, and psychic medium. Tonight, Laura will be explaining the reflexology maps of the hands and the feet and how they correspond to the body parts, glands, and organs. Please welcome Laura Canal. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, I will be talking about reflexology and how it works tonight. Um, reflexology is an age-old healing art. It was founded by uh, Dr. William Fitzgerald, and he's an American doctor, but he did all of his education in the early 1900s in Europe. And he learned about the nervous system and how stimulation works on the nervous pathway. So what he, what he taught, or what he learned, was um, the sensory pathways. And when he was doing his experiments, what he would do is he would take clothespins and put it on your fingers and just to find the nervous, the pathways uh, causing any numbness or anesthesia effect. He worked mainly on the hands and later on the feet. And when I'm doing a reflexology session, I have to do both sides of the body. So how it's all divided up is there's 10 longitudinal zones and you start from the middle of the body so on the hands it would be the thumb or on the feet as you see in the diagram is the big toe and they're counted out zone one zone two zone three zone four zone five and they coordinate with all the body parts so on the right hand of your body it coordinates with all the body parts on the right hand side. And on the left hand of the body, it coordinates with all the body parts on the left hand side of the body. So there's a couple other um, pioneers of reflexology, and that's Dr. Joel Riley. And he actually added to the zone therapy. And he did the first diagrams and drawings of the reflex points located on the hands and the feet. A couple others were Mildred Carter and Eunice Ingram. So what reflexology is, is the pressure technique or compression technique done on the palms of the hands or the planter of the feet. And there's areas of the body that you're gonna be seeing later on when I bring up the maps of the hands and the feet um, that are connected to all parts, glands, and organs in the entire body. So there's two communication systems in the body. There we go. The endocrine sy system and the nervous system. They both share structural, functional, and electrical characteristics. Both act in complementary fashion, uh, monitoring and adjusting the body's physiological activities. So as a whole, the nervous system has two principal parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system is all the neural tissue outside of the central nervous system. And as you see in the diagram, it all culminates into the peripheral nervous system down the arms and down the legs of the body. Then it's divided into two divisions of the peripheral nervous system is the somatic nervous system and the autonomic. The somatic is our voluntary action. The autonomic nervous system consists of the structures that regulate the autonomic or involuntary functions. The two divisions of the autonomic nervous system are the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system functions as an emergency system. When the body is coping with stress, stress and tension, many physiological changes happen. 
This is our fight and flight. The parasympathetic nervous system counteracts the uh, sympathetic nervous system and it calms the body. So the, uh, the nervous system is fast acting impulses and the endocrine system is slower acting but lasting longer. The endocrine system are the glands in the body. The glands in the body are, in the feet, are um, what I know as the uh, chakra centers. And the glands start in the head. So you got the, the um, hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the pineal gland. In the throat is the, the uh, thyroid and the parathyroids. In the chest is the, thyro the uh, thymus, and in the abdominal area is our adrenal gland and our pancreas. In the pelvic area, it is our gonads, which is ovaries in females and testes in males. Hormones are chemical messenger messengers secreted into the blood or extracellular fluid by one cell that affects the functioning of another cell. Most hormones circulate in the blood, coming into contact with essentially all cells. However, a given hormone usually affects only a limited number of cells. They're called the target cells. A target cell responds to a hormone because it bears receptors for that hormone. We have the mechanisms in our body to heal and giving the right environment. It is noted that disease occurs 80% of the time from stress and tension. It's our responsibility to be proactive with our, be proactive with our health. When the body is under stress, it lowers the immune system, causing the disease to enter the body. The body triggers a stress response and alerts us that we need to slow down, rest, and nourish our body. When our immune system is depleted below level of resistance, we are required to fight the disease. I'm showing a picture here of a torsion field. And the reason I did this is to show you the pathways from the aura, or the body of, of energy that surrounds our physical body. And it interpenetrates and connects with the chakra points in the body. So going through the endocrine system and the chakra points, as I look at it, as in energy, it all, it's all one. So the subtle body, or aura, is a body of energy that surrounds or interpenetrates your physical body. It is known to be divided into seven sub subtle bodies, and they're broken down to the physical plane body, and the astral plane body. There are pathways connecting from the subtle body and the seven chakras in the physical body. The major chakras all vibrate at a different frequency. The aura will expand or contract depending on your general health and emotional well-being. Think of your aura as a magnet that picks up other people's energies when you're not vibrating at a, a high frequency. The best way to vibrate at a high frequency is to emanate love and joy. Balancing our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects is important for our health. Universal energy is our life force energy. It's from the air that we breathe, the food that we eat, and the water that we drink. Now, why is it important to ground ourselves? So, we have our physical body that, um, and the brain of it, our nervous system, and all of our endocrine system, and we have this body of, of um, energy around us, and also underneath our feet. So, it's important to ground ourselves, because the root chakra is our 
security is our foundational chakra. Grounding is the foundation of the overall growth and development. Just like a tree depends on, upon the health of its root system, the functioning of all our other chakras depend on the proper development of the base chakra. Something interesting I was reading this week, and it was about um, from the spirit of trees and green itself. Last week I was noticing um, how much I was craving green um, because the grass is not growing, we don't have the leaves on the tree, and we really need that, uh, that green color. So it was very interesting. I'll read what I, I uh, got from the book of the spirit of the trees. Humans need light and color, as well as air, water, food, and the frequencies humans thrive on are what are known as the visible part of the spectrum, from red, orange, yellow, green, purple, and blue. Green is the most intense for human beings. The human body absorbs light through the eyes, skin, and food. Since green is the dominant color of the forest, the physio-psychological effects of green light rays on humans is really interesting. Green is situated in the middle of the color spectrum. In color healing, it is known as to cool, soothe, calm, and relax both mentally and physically. Green is associated with uh, youth, growth, fertility, hope, and new life. Green is the color of our heart chakra and emanating love, which is the most powerful healing energy. Be, be mindful that our external influences affect our internal equilibrium. Blockages in the body are caused by stress and tension or mental and emotional imbalances. Using the hands and feet as tools as I do as a reflexologist, to release the blockages makes a lot of sense because there are tens of thousands of nerve endings on the palms of our hands and the plantar of our feet. First and foremost, reflexology, what I do is I relax you. Because when you have the removal of stress and tension in your body, your body can heal itself. It has the mechanisms to heal itself under the right environment. It also enhances circulation. So when I'm doing the, the feet, which are the furthest from the heart, it's um, optimal that I enhance the circulation. It assists the body to normalize uh, metabolism naturally, uh, pain reduction or elimination, it complements all other healing modalities. It assists cancer treatments, so it um, eliminates all the, all the unnecessary toxins in the body. It decreases the duration and intensity of menstrual pain. It's beneficial for post-operative recovery or pain reduction. The promotion of restful sleep and it assists with the elimination or reduction of digestive issues. It assists fertility, birthing, deli delivery, and postpartum recovery. It also helps with our overall well being and improves our mental health. And it, bo it boosts the immune system. Our feet are very fascinating because they are our support, our balance, and our mobility. It's what carries us forward in life. They are the furthest from our heart and the most beneficial to enhance our circulation. Feet have the biggest surface to work on. So when I first started doing reflexology, it, um, it was foot reflexology. And now I've gone in on to do enhance as well. But feet were always my passion. Along the instep of your foot, you guys can see this. This is the spinal reflux. And 
when I'm stimulating the spinal reflex, this helps with um, eliminating any pain in the body. Okay, so um, when I was first started doing reflexology, I had a gentleman come to me, and he had had a, an accident while he was playing soccer. He went airborne, and he landed on the top of his head. He'd been to physiotherapy, he'd been to um, chiropractors, and what he, um, he was in pain for four years. So I said, well, come on in session, and we'll try it out. So as I went up the spinal, the spine of his foot, I actually found where the damage of his, in his spine was. It was in the lumbar and also in the cervical area. He was fascinated with the findings that I found in his foot. And he called me about a week later and he said, I can't believe I had no pain in my body for over five days. So he came back to me several times and now today he has absolutely no pain at all. One of the reasons I decided to um, get certified as a reflexologist was um, I actually got plantar fasciitis. I was in the service industry for 30 years and um, it affected my, my feet, being on my feet all the time. It was this area in here and it mostly affected my left foot. So anybody with plantar fasciitis it generally um, affects your left foot. Because as you're looking at the digestive system, and this is our ascending colon, our transverse colon, and our descending colon, and the sigmoid colon. So generally you feel the effects of plantar fasciitis in this area here, which the sigmoid colon is the rectum and the anus. So the problem that I actually had was my di digestive system. It would swell, my foot would swell in this area here, which I wasn't able to eliminate properly. Once I, I relaxed and got into a schedule where I could go to the bathroom whenever I wanted to, <laughs> um, it relieved the symptoms of the, the plantar fasciitis. So one of the reasons I did start reflexology is for my own children. Um, my daughter has anxiety and my son had debilitating migraines. And the area that um, afflicts anybody with migraines is all the way up the spine, so the spinal area along here, and all the way up the spine, and this whole area encompassing the, um, the head. And when I work this area, I can relieve people of migraines. Something I tell people to do, if they do have a headache or migraines, to rub their big toes. Mm -hmm. um, I usually find in the joint area here, of both of the feet, almost like a disconnect, like it's disconnected in the area. So when I do a rotation, I actually melt, melt the, uh, I call it melting, melt the uh, joints together until it doesn't feel crunchy anymore. So it helps with um, the digestive area as well. I find many people hold their stress in the neck, but it also affects their digestive area. And I find many nodules in this area as well. Nodules feel like, like a bump, almost like a, a marble underneath the skin. Just started doing hands recently, um, although I trained myself, was, was trained to do the hands two years ago. I didn't go forth with it for some reason. I thought people didn't want their hands massaged. Although I've had a lot of people that actually really love their hands, their hands done. So, um, doing the hands helps the upper chakras. It also helps with anybody with um, anxiety, um, asthma, 
strokes, paralysis, uh, arthritis. And I actually have a couple of clients now, or one client in particular, that had uh, a fall last year, and he ended up being quadriplegic. But um, in time, he got all the feeling back. He fell, and he actually cr uh, crushed his C2 to C6 and had to have surgery on the back of his neck. Um, once he was, once he got the feeling back, the hands, he couldn't, you couldn't even touch them. Couldn't even touch his hands, they were in so much pain. So I'm working with them now to help depress and eliminate the pain of, in his hands. Because the hands in that area connect solely to the neck. Anybody with anxiety, I do it on the feet, but I found since I've been doing the hands, it actually works better on the hand area because it affects this area of your hand. My daughter had um, anxiety so bad that she would get psoriasis in that area of her hands. And it would it would actually crack and bleed. We've been working with her hands now and they're actually healed up. But this whole area, the lungs, the chest, the breast, along this line here is your diaphragm. Um, and if you look at it, the adrenal gland is in that area and the solar plexus is in that area as well. So this concludes my, um, my talk for the, tonight.